Hello, my name is Joe Hildreth and welcome to episode 16 of Linux CNC for the Home Hobbyist. In this episode I will briefly talk about the two configuration wizards available to set up your machine to work with Linux CNC. This episode will, however, focus on the StepConf wizard and will be considered to be a general overview. As the series progresses, StepConf will be revisited to address specific configuration settings. The StepConf wizard is used primarily to set up a machine using stepper motors. I'm a home hobbyist that would like to share my experience using Linux CNC, formerly known as EMC2, as a controller and CNC controlled machines for the home shop. It's my hope that as I release videos over time that other home hobbyists can use the information to make their own CNC controlled machines. With some luck, maybe these videos will remove some of the mystery behind the Linux CNC controller and perhaps help some avoid the issues that I encountered while learning how to use it. With that out of the way, let's get started. In video number 9, titled Linux CNC I.O. Options, I discussed some of the I.O. hardware that is available to use with Linux CNC. I talked about parallel ports and MESA cards. The parallel port and MESA cards are used so often that the developers of Linux CNC created programs to help you configure them for use with a controller. Linux CNC contains a program or wizard to set up MESA devices called PNC Conf and is available in the Linux CNC menu on the start bar. Later, if there's interest, I may start to cover the MESA hardware and the use of the PNC Conf wizard. The other program, or wizard, developed for use in setting up a machine that will be driven with parallel ports is called StepConf. It too is available in the Linux CNC menu. StepConf is the wizard that I will be focusing on in this episode. In the previous episodes, I've covered a lot of topics, hopefully in a way that represents small digestible bytes that you're able to follow along with. We will use much of the information we gained in these previous episodes and apply it to the configuration of the machine using the StepConf wizard. I have listed the episodes thus far on the screen. Pause this video and look through them. If it's been a while since you've watched these videos, you might want to go back and refresh yourself if you find what I'm covering a little bit confusing. As I progress through the dialog windows of the StepConf wizard, I will try to remind you in which previous episode I covered the information. We cannot postpone the inevitable any longer. Let's press on. To start the StepConf wizard, click on the application menu at the top left of the screen, go to CNC, and select StepConf wizard from the menu. When StepConf starts, you will be presented with the StepConf welcome screen dialog. The welcome dialog informs you that StepConf creates the configuration files, the .how and .ini files, for lathes and milling machines using stepper motors connected to the parallel port. So from here, we click on the Start button to get started. When running the wizard, you're given a few housekeeping options. Let me talk about them. First, the program wants to know if you want to create a new configuration, modify an existing configuration, or import a mock file. If you're setting up your machine for the first time, you'll want to select Create a New Configuration radio button on the dialog. If you've already created a configuration and want to modify it, then select the Modify a Configuration already created with this program. Also, take note of the information in the text below these options. If you have created a machine configuration and then made modifications to the config files outside of the StepConf wizard, there would be a good chance those modifications will be lost. The reason for this is because the StepConf completely rewrites the config files replacing the old ones. There are ways to preserve these changes you have made, but best practice is to use either the StepConf wizard for your machine configuration or edit them by hand but you cannot go back and forth willy-nilly. Finally, the last option is to import a mock file. If you have a machine that runs on mock, you can import the XML file into StepConf and convert it into a Linux CNC config file. After the file is imported, you'll go through the pages of StepConf to confirm or modify the entries. The original mock XML file will not be changed. 
It should be noted at the time of this presentation that only Mach 3 files can be imported. Finally, you have the choice of StepConf performing some extra actions. StepConf can create a shortcut or a link to the folder containing your config files on the desktop. It can create a shortcut or a link to your desktop to start Linux CNC using your configuration files that you created with StepConf. And finally, you have the option to create a simulated hardware configuration. This last option is handy if you want to create a configuration for testing even if you don't have the actual hardware. I would recommend checking the first two additional options here simply to make accessing the config files faster and a convenient place to start the controller. Once you've made your selection, click the forward button to advance to the next dialog. This dialog is used to record some basic information about the machine you're trying to configure. Most of it's self-explanatory, but I will cover each option in turn. Machine Name You can call your machine anything you like, but there are a few rules which have to be followed. Because the machine name is used to create a folder on the hard disk, you are limited to the characters that you use in the name. You may only use uppercase letters, lowercase letters, digits, the hyphen or dash character, and the underscore character. In this example, the machine is named my-mil. Under this field, you'll see that StepConf will display a path to where your configuration files will be kept. Note that it creates a folder named the same as your machine name. Axis Configuration Next is the Axis Configuration. The drop-down presents you with the possible options. A machine containing an X, Y, and Z axis like a mill, a machine with an X, Y, Z, and an A axis like a 4-axis mill, and finally a machine with an X and Z axis like a lathe. Select the choice that best resembles your machine. In this example, a machine with three axes is selected, X, Y, and Z. Reset Default Machine Units This field sets the, dis the default machine units and you can choose between inch and millimeter. The unit that you set here will have an effect on the remaining StepConf Wizard dialogs. Do not make your choice lightly. Linux CNC uses this setting to base the tools in the tool table from. For example, if you choose inches, Linux CNC will assume that your tools are imperial. If you choose millimeters, Linux CNC will assume that your tooling is metric. Set this field to whatever the bulk of your tooling is. Inch for imperial tooling and millimeter for metric tooling. See video 14, Calculating Steps Per Machine Unit for Lead Screws, starting at the 56 second mark. Driver Type the StepConf wizard is preset with a number of existing stepper motor drivers. Check the pull down list to see if your driver is listed. If you're using one of the drivers listed, select it. Doing so will automatically populate the driver timing settings in the fields below. If this is the case, you can skip down to the base period maximum jitter field. If your driver is not listed, then select other. If your particular driver is not listed, you will need to get the timing information from your stepper drivers. This is usually supplied by the manufacturer of the driver, but if it isn't, don't worry. There are ways to derive sane values for your unknown stepper driver timing specifications. Step time. The step time represents how long the step signal has to be on to be recognized by the stepper driver. This value is entered in the field in nanoseconds and should be listed in the documentation of your driver. If the time listed in the documentation is in microseconds, then multiply that value by a thousand to get the number of nanoseconds required. If you don't have this value, then setting this to 20,000 will work with most drivers. Step space. The step space is the minimum amount of time required between step pulses to the driver. This value is entered in the field in nanoseconds and again should be listed in the documentation for your driver. If you don't have this value, then the setting of 20,000 will work with most drivers. Direction hold. 
The direction hold is the amount of time in nanoseconds that the signal has to be held for the driver to recognize a direction change. If you cannot find this value in your driver's documentation, then a value of 20,000 will work for most drivers. Direction Setup The direction setup is the amount of time in nanoseconds that must elapse after the last step pulse before making a change in step direction. Again, if you cannot find this value in your step or driver's documentation, then 20,000 is a value that will work with most drivers. If you're one of those unfortunate souls who doesn't have the above timing specifications for your drivers, don't despair with the default values. There are methods of adjusting and testing smaller values to allow you to tune your stepper drivers. These will be covered in a future video. If you need more information about the values, please see video 12 in the series titled Stepper Motor Drivers. After entering the stepper driver timing settings comes the number of parallel ports installed in the machine. Here you have the option of either one or two. If you have more than two parallel ports installed on the machine, then they will need to be configured outside the stepper uh, step comp wizard. Most users will have one or two ports. Click the radio button that matches your number of ports. If you need an additional port to be added to your machine, see video number 10 in the series titled Linux CNC and the Parallel Port. I should also point out that if your machine design needs to utilize more than two parallel ports, you may want to consider one of the MESA options as they provide much more I.O. than stacking up parallel ports. Base Period Maximum Jitter The final field on the dialog is the maximum jitter. Back in episode 8, titled Stress Testing the Linux CNC Computer, we stress tested the machine to see how it affected the real-time system. While doing this, we monitored the jitter that was introduced and told to write this value down and save it. This is where you enter the value that you saved. If for some reason you forgot to write it down or have not tested the system, you have the opportunity to run it again from the dialog by clicking the test base period jitter button in the lower left corner. Lastly, the dialog displays the minimum base period and the maximum step rate. The minimum base period is calculated based on the jitter you entered and the timing specifications that were entered for the stepper driver. The maximum step rate is calculated by dividing one second by the number of nanoseconds in the minimum base period. With that done, we can click the forward button to continue on to the next dialog of the wizard. Depending on if you selected one or two parallel ports in the previous dialog, you'll get one or both of the dialogs that you see on the screen. Now, I may be putting the cart before the horse a little bit here because I've not showed you how to physically hook up any hardware. There will be videos covering how to do that in the future. I will, however, give you the five mile overview of the process now. If you've watched all the videos to this point, you'll be in pretty good shape to follow what I'm about to say. Starting with a computer, a cable is connected from the parallel port connector on the back of your machine and to the connector on your breakout board, in other cases directly to your stepper driver. In the event that you have an integrated stepper driver, the documentation provided with it will tell you what parallel port pins provide what function on the device. You will use this information to set the fields in the step conf parallel port dialog. A breakout board on the other hand will let you choose what pins are assigned to what function of your choice. Recall that a parallel port can be set up as either in or out. By default the first parallel port Linux CNC sets up is used as an output port okay, or an out. Check the documentation of your breakout board and make sure that it has pins 2 through 9 set up as output pins. Standalone stepper drivers will make two connections to run them. These are called step and direction. You will run wires from, from two of the output pins on the breakout board to these input connections on the driver. Make note of which pin numbers you use to make these connections and their function. You will do this for each stepper driver that you're hooking up. Just remember that output pins allow information to be sent from the com uh, controller computer to the outside world 
and input pins allow signals to be read from the outside world to the controller computer. With that out of the way, take a look at the parallel port 1 dialog on the left of the screen. You'll notice that it's broken down into two columns. The left column showing the available output pins and the right column showing the available input pins. In addition, you'll see that the parallel port base address field and a drop down box that allows you to pick from some popular configurations and preset the pins for you. Let's start with these presets and move forward with the port configuration from there. Select the drop down box and see if your hardware follows one of these standards. If it does, select yours and click the preset button. This will apply the appropriate settings to the pins in the output column. If none of the selections in the list apply to you, no worries, we'll simply define them ourselves. The left hand column is a list of available output pins. If you've hooked up your motor drivers, you have made notes to which pins you hooked them to. Say for example you hooked up pins 2 and 3 to the driver that will run the Y axis, where pin 2 will provide the step pulses and pin 3 provides the direction. In the drop down uh, list for pin 2, click it and you'll see many possible selections that you can choose from. From this list, you would choose Y step. Next, click on the drop down list for pin 3 and from the list choose Y direction. You will continue in this manner until you have defined all the pins for your stepper motor drivers. A close examination of the items in the drop down list will show you several things that be, can be preset using the wizard. For example, spindle and coolant controls. The right hand column is similar to the left column, but it sets items to be read as inputs to Linux CNC. These include things like limit switches and probes. If you know the pins and functions assigned to them, feel free to set any output or input pins as needed. However, this series is meant to introduce and configure things in an incremental manner. So at this point, I only intend to make the settings for the stepper motor drivers and nothing else. When things like spindle control and limits are discussed, we will revisit the step comp wizard and add them when the time comes. Note that there's a small checkbox next to each pen. This allows you to invert the signal. For example, your hardware might require an active low signal to function properly. This is where you can invert that signal. Reading the documentation will generally inform you if this is the case. And finally, I should mention that any pens that are not being utilized should be set to unused. Last on the dialog is the parallel port base address field. It will be in this field that you will either specify the enumerated port number, zero in most cases, or the port address. If this isn't clear to you, please see video number 10 titled Linux CNC in the parallel port. We can now click the forward button and move along. If you selected two parallel ports in the base information dialog, you will be presented with another port dialog titled Parallel Port 2. This dialog works in the same manner as the first one as far as setting the input and output uh, pen functions. However, before setting pens, take note that the center of the dialog towards the bottom, you'll see a drop down list with the options of in and out. This drop down allows you to select whether this port is to be set to mode in or mode out. Again, if this is unclear, see video 10. Changing the selection will move pins 2 through 9 to either the input column on the, on the right or to the output column on the left. And finally, notice that the input box located just above the drop down list. This field is where you would enter either the enumerated port number, usually 1, or the address of the port. I think that there should be a label for this field but it may be missing because of room constraints on the dialog. Just know that this is the f what the field is used for. When you're finished with this dialog, click the forward button to continue. The next window that StepConf offers is the Options dialog. Linux CNC allows you to utilize optional How User Interface components. Two are offered on this screen. The first is the Pi VCP GUI panel where PyVCP means Python Virtual Control Panel. 
This is the virtual control panel that you can add to the Access Window Manager to add your own custom functionality to Linux CNC. For example, indicators for coolant mist on and off, a tachometer for the spindle, custom probe functions, and much, much more. I will discuss the Python virtual control panel in separate videos. There's a fair amount to cover in order to get the most from this user interface component. The second user interface component available is a PLC, which stands for Programmable Logic Controller, called Classic Ladder. The Classic Ladder PLC allows you to add custom logic to work on inputs and outputs that Linux CNC will use. This is an advanced topic and will be covered in its, in, in its own right. You may select either one or both on this screen. I suggest though, if this is your first time delving into setting up Linux CNC, to leave both of these options unchecked. Finally, at the bottom of the dialog is a checkbox to display an on-screen prompt for manual tool change. Unless your machine is equipped with an automatic tool changer, make sure this option is checked. When in use, an M6 tool change is encountered, the motion component will stop the spindle and pause the program. The How Manual Tool Change component will then receive a signal from the motion component causing it to display a tool change window prompting the user which tool number is loaded based on the last T number programmed. The dialog will stay active until the Continue button is pressed. When the Continue button is pressed, How Manual Tool Change will signal the motion component that the tool, is, uh, that the tool change is complete thus allowing the motion to turn the spindle back on and resume the program execution. You can now click the forward button to continue onto the next screen of the StepConf wizard. Depending on the type of machine that you selected on the base information dialog, you'll be presented with two or more Axis configuration dialogs. I will cover one of them, but they are all essentially the same. Motor steps per revolution. Recall from video 11, Introduction to Stepper Motors, that stepper motors are made to have some amount of discrete steps per revolution. Most motors that the hobbyists will acquire or purchase will have 200 steps per revolution. Enter into this field the number of steps required for the motor hooked to this axis to turn one revolution. If there's any question on what this should be, please see the documentation supplied with your motor. Driver Microstepping If you're using the microstepping feature of your motor driver, you will want to enter the value that you have set on the driver into this field. For example, if you're using quarter stepping on your motor driver, you'll want to enter 4 into this field. See video 12 titled Stepper Motor Drivers for more information. Pulley Teeth Motor to Lead Screw in the next field, we have to supply the ratio between the motor and the lead screw. Recall from video 13, titled Linear Motion, I discuss gear reductions. Say, for example, you have a 20-tooth gear on the stepper motor, driving a 50-tooth gear on the screw. You would put 20 in the first field and 50 in the second. Or you could reduce it to 2 and 5, or 1 and 2.5. You should get the idea. Lead Screw Pitch I discussed lead screw in the linear motion video number 13. I realize that this may be a confusing label for this field. Recall that pitch is the distance between one thread crest and the next. However, the dialog has units listed to the right hand side requesting revolutions per inch. If we were using a quarter 20 threaded rod for a lead screw, we know that the pitch is 50 thou. The threads per inch would be 1 divided by 50 thou, or 20. So for single start screws, it would just be the TPI value of the screw. Things get different though when a screw has multiple starts. Take, for example, my machine, which has half 10 screws with 5 starts. What value goes here? Well, first, find the pitch. The specs say that it's a half 10. So there are 10 threads to the inch. So 1 divided by 10 gives me 0 0.100 inches, right, or a tenth of an inch. Now multiply the pitch by the number of starts, and I get 0.100 times 5, which equals 0 
so the net would travel a half inch per revolution. Now to find the number of revolutions we take one inch divided by this distance. So one divided by 0.5 equals two. The lead screw will take two revolutions per inch of travel. So two goes into the field. If these calculations are unfamiliar, please watch videos 13, 14, and 15. The maximum velocity and the maximum acceleration fields will require some tuning to get just right. I will cover methods of tuning an axis in a future video, but in essence, the maximum velocity field tells the controller how fast the motor is allowed to move the axes. By default here is 1 inch per second, or 60 inches per minute. So the controller will not drive the axis any faster than this, even if you program a faster feed rate. The next field indicates how fast the motor accelerates the movement of the axis. The default here is 30 inches per second. What this means is that if the controller will move the axis at 30 inches per second until a maximum velocity is reached. Accelerating this fast means that the maximum velocity will be reached in 0.033 seconds. That's pretty quick. If you have weak motors, you may find that the motor will miss steps as it accelerates to its maximum velocity. Again, this is why we tune the axis. The button at the top right that reads test this axis will let you experiment with different values of velocity and acceleration to help you determine what your setup will do. I will cover this in another video. The next section of the dialog deals with homing and axis travel. My intentions are to cover this area again when I get to the specific topic, but I'll briefly discuss each of these fields. The home location. If you set the axis up to home, this would be the position that the axis will move to when the homing procedure has completed. If you do not have homing switches on your machine, this will be the location that you manually home the axis. Table travel. The distance the table travels is based on the origin position of the axis. For example, say I have a router with an x-axis that can move up to 24 inches. If I set the home position all the way to the left and call it zero, then my table travel will be from zero to 24. It should be noted that the home location for the axis should be within the table travel limits. Home switch location. This is the position that the home switch for the axis either trips or releases relative to the home position. This option and the following two are only available if you have home switches selected in the pinout configuration in the parallel port dialogs. Home search velocity. This is the velocity at which a controller will search for the home switch. It's important that a value low enough is entered to allow the motion to decelerate to a stop before hitting the end of travel or running off the switch. Home latch direction. Here you have the option of same or opposite. Setting the option to same will cause the axis to back off the switch and approach it again very slow until the switch closes, at which time the home position is set. If the opposite selection is made, the axis will back off the switch until it opens and then sets the home position. If these last three options seem a little confusing, don't worry. I plan to do separate videos on homing and limits for the machine as there are other considerations that need to be accounted for when you set the machine up. Finally, the last selection of the dialog provides you with some information based on the values you set in the dialog. Time to accelerate to max speed is calculated from the max acceleration and max velocity fields. Distance to accelerate to the max speed tells you how far the axis will travel before reaching its maximum velocity. Pulse rate at max speed indicates the fastest pulse rate that can be delivered to the drivers and will determine the base period or the heartbeat of the controller. Values above 20,000 Hz may result in slow response times or even lockups. Uh, this value will vary from computer to computer. Lastly, there's a button in the upper right dialog labeled Test This Axis. When this button is clicked, it will open the dialog that you see on the bottom right of your screen. 
This dialog will let you experiment with different velocity and acceleration settings for the axis to help determine what's best, you know, what the best setting for your machine is. In use, you would start with a low acceleration and work up to a velocity you hope to attain. Once you find the max velocity the axis can attain, subtract 10% and use that value. Next, you can adjust the acceleration in a similar manner. I will cover the stuff in a future video about tuning the machine. Configuring the spindle for Linux CNC controller is yet another topic that needs to be discussed with some thoroughness. I will make a video on this topic but will cover the essence of the dialog here. Spindles can be run using pulse width modulation called PWM and pulse density modulation called PDM. The first field specifies the frequency of the signal to use to drive the pulse width modulation clock. The speed at which you set this clock is determined by your spindle controller and should be in its documentation. If your spindle uses pulse density modulation, then enter zero into this field. Pulse density modulation is used for spindle controllers that operate with an analog voltage. PDM provides a means of generating an analog value based on a stream of bits it produces. Speed 1 and 2 and PWM 1 and 2 well, these fields control the linear relationships between the pulse width modulated signal and a certain spindle speed. If you know these values, you can enter them in. If not, you'll have to perform a spindle calibration to determine the values. This will be covered in more detail in a future video. Finally, the cycles per revolution indicates the number of pulses the spindle will send back to the controller per revolution of the spindle. This is used for position feedback control. Lastly, click the forward button to move on. We have reached the last step conf dialog. What a journey! This screen informs us all the necessary information has been collected and the wizard is ready to create your configuration files and write them to disk. Additionally, the dialog gives you some helpful hints in the event that you're having issues with your machine. It mentions some of the more common problems that may be encountered with the new setup, including the possibility of system sluggishness or lockups, lost steps while running Linux CNC, and unexpected real-time delay messages. Finally, we can click the Done button to complete the wizard. Once StepConf writes the configuration files to the disk, it asks if you want to quit the program. Click the Yes button to finish. Now that we've waited through all those StepConf dialogs, what was created. First, you'll notice two new icons on your desktop. One that looks like a folder, which, if you double-click, will open to show you the files in the configuration for your machine. I will go over these files in the near future and explain why they are there. Finally, another icon is created which will launch Linux CNC using the configuration files for your machine. That was a lot of information for an overview of the StepConf utility, and if you made it this far, you probably have a real interest in building your own CNC machine or converting an existing machine to CNC. Because this was an overview of StepConf, you'll discover that we'll be revisiting this utility several more times as I discuss things like home and limit switches, spindle control, touch probes, virtual control panels, classic ladders, and more. Remember, my goal is to give you digestible bytes of information that will build on the knowledge gained in previous tutorials. And like I claimed at the beginning of these, I hope you'll find it useful in understanding how the controller works and how it's set up. If you have specific questions, please feel free to comment below the video or send me an email. You can get my email address from the About section of my channel, or you can go to my website located at myheap.com and email me using the contact form. So where are we going to from here? Well, I think listening to a tutorial about how to use the StepComp wizard is one thing, but I also think that a practical demonstration using a real machine would be helpful too. In the upcoming videos, I want to do a real setup using StepConf and some videos on how to hook up the hardware we've discussed so far. Thanks for hanging with me. As always, Thank you for taking the time from your busy life to watch my videos. If the videos I produce help you, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing. 
CNC is a fun and rewarding addition to the home shop, and if you have friends who are thinking of getting into it, please consider sending them my way. Other than that, have a blessed day.